Well, what do we have here? That is the last bit of the stringers out of the front of the boat. I uh, bit the bullet and cut them out because I'm going to use them as templates. It's much easier than trying to scarf it in. So uh, what I did is I took my angle grinder and cut the fiberglass and then just bent it over and it just broke off the, uh, the, their peanut butter that they had in there in the boat. So uh, I've been busy this morning. It's Saturday and uh, my goal is to get a bunch done this weekend. I've only got about five hours on it today. We've got a uh, little memorial service to go to for my wife's grandmother who passed a couple of weeks ago and they're just now getting around to do a memorial service. So I uh, had to go do that. But anyway, tomorrow I'm going to see if my father-in-law will come over and help me uh, hand me boards as I get in and out. Because uh, just this morning uh, I've been going in and out, trimming and out and in and out and in. And I tell you, it's tiring. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I found that if I jack the nose of the boat up <clears throat> real high with my engine hoist, uh, I can actually get in and out of the boat better and it's just not so fatiguing. So what I've got done so far, I got the two main stringers in and I got the two bulkheads that surround the, uh, uh, the uh, what do you call it, the gas tank. <clears throat> and that's about as far as I've gotten so far. And of course I cut out those. I'm fixing to cut that, those particular stringers. It actually steps in and then goes forward. Now you notice that the, uh, the stuff is very high. Well, what I'm going to do, because this deck does a weird slant, is I'm going to wait until I get this all tabbed in and done before I cut my, my stringer height, with the exception of back here. Because back here, they actually step out and up because of the way that the, uh, the engine sits, because it's a 454. Uh, I guess it's wider, and it has it comes up and it steps out and then goes up again. So these stringers are actually shorter in the back. So uh, that I have to I've saved a piece of the old um, tail end of this thing, so I can use it as a reference. So those will be cut before I put them in. But as far as the final stringer height is most likely going to be cut once we uh, uh, once we get it all tabbed in. That way it's you know we we know we're going to get it right. Um, you see I've got my black line across the back, which what I did is I put a level uh, from from one side of the deck to the other and then just drew a line, just a reference point really. So uh, that's it so far. Um, it's early morning Saturday and it's already hot out here. It's uh, mid-April and I tell you, it's hot. We're supposed to have 93 degrees here in Dallas. That's warm. So yeah, and look at there, I got more grinding to do. Fun, fun. But I'm gonna do the board cutting first and then I'm gonna take all this out. Little tip for you guys, um, what I use is my little DeWalt brad nailer to tack this stuff in place. You don't sit here and just, just nail it together all the way, I just put one tack, for like you're tack welding a piece of metal, to hold it together so that way you don't have to worry about things falling over. Now of course we're going to pull all those out whenever we, uh, whenever we put it together, um, but at least it holds it for right now and we can finish our framing process or our mock-up. Um, so that's it for now, uh, I'll update you here in a bit when I get these cut. Um, what I'm going to do is uh, use those as a tracing so that way I can trace them and just go all the way down and then make them a little bit higher. We'll see how it works. Ooh, boy, these front stringers were a butt whipping. I don't mind telling you. Uh, it's a lot more harder than it looks getting those angles right, even if you chase, if, even if you trace it, because actually the boat slants backward like this. So you have to account for that in your uh, where it mates up to your other piece here. So it takes a lot of you know cutting, recutting, measuring again. And I hope I've got enough to hit my uh, my deck height. I had to sand down and cut a whole bunch off. I think I'm okay. I made this one a lot taller so I can cut it down. I'm going to take uh, 10 more measurements to make sure that I don't need to recut that guy. I mean, it's better to recut it now. The wood's cheap than to have to cut it completely out if our deck doesn't touch it. So it looks okay for my preliminary measurements, but uh, I'm too hungry right now to go and eat some lunch. Uh, and I tell you, it is getting hot in this boat. Oh my God. Um, there is no wind whatsoever. And they said it was supposed to be windy today. I'd give anything for a little wisp. But uh, anyway, so that's done. Uh, I'm going to make a bulkhead right up there in the front to, uh, to uh, basically separate the, the, the two areas there and make it all nice and neat. Uh, and then I'm gonna start working on our long stringers that run down the side which means I'm going to have to take two pieces and laminate them together, uh, which shouldn't be too bad. Um, I'll just use PL glue and, and do it that way. But uh, other than that, it's moving along pretty quick. And then once this is all said and done, I've labeled everything. You notice I've got front fuel, I've got aft fuel, I've got everything starboard and port. So that way when I pull it out, I, I, in, I did it in Sharpie so that way you can see it whenever you, uh, after you put the, um, 
fiberglass and waterproofing down on it and uh, pull it out, waterproof it, and uh, grind that down up in the front so that way it's all prepped and ready to go. And then grind my keel where it's thin so that we can put some more in there. I'm actually going to go get me some 24 ounce uh, woven, uh, which is a lot heavier duty. I'm going to put a couple of pieces down there and then finish it off with 1708 just to make it a you know, a nice, good repair, make sure we don't have any problems. And I think the reason you're seeing light through it is because the gel coat on the outsides wore off. And uh, I'll go back out there and re-gel coat it whenever we strengthen this up. But we want to make sure you get it nice and, and clean. So um, once that's done, uh, we can actually wash this, this hull one more time. And then uh, pee all these guys into place and let them dry really good um, all week. And then hopefully next weekend, uh, we can start glassing this stuff in and get it, uh, get it done. Well, I had a little setback, um, nothing huge, but uh, I'm glad I checked everything before I go marking and really uh, trying to put it in here. Um, notice the bow of this boat is way up in the air. Well, when I put in my uh, bulkheads, I wasn't taking into effect that they need to be basically perpendicular to the center line of the boat. And so, with that being said, when I tried to try to fit my um, um, gas tank, it was basically the gas tanks here and here's the bulkhead coming down like this so it wasn't perpendicular so what i did is i readjusted it the bad thing is that makes my forward stringers out of shape so that'll bring them back about an inch it's not going to hurt anything i'll just cut them flush i'll take my speed square draw a line straight down make it nice and flush and they'll come back and sit nice and neat against the uh this bulkhead should have known it was kind of funny whenever i was trying to put it in here and had to cut it an angle but you know, you get going and you don't really pay attention. So anyway, uh, it is friggin' hot out here. I'm telling you, at least the wind came up. But I uh, got my bulkhead cut for the front. Uh, everything's good to go. I think I'm going to go to Home Depot and get three quarter inch pine or birch in a 12 foot section for that stringer on the side. Um, I think that'd be a lot better than trying to splice these together and having a glue joint in the middle. So that way I've got one piece all the way up. So that's what I'm going to attempt to do. Um, I asked the question on iBoats.com and so hopefully somebody will respond that it's okay because my Glastron's all pine. Uh, it's been around since 1981. So, um, But anyway, that's what I'm doing. I'm going to go ahead and pull these two stringers out and I'm going to cut them down and see if I can get them dry fit back in, make sure they're okay before we move forward. Okay, so we're actually doing the side stringers now, which I went up and got a nice big uh, piece of, uh, I forget what this is, white wood, which is a higher grade pine. Uh, I know I probably got, should have got Douglas fir, but uh, to order that it would have taken forever. And I'm going to encase this and soak it in resin, so I'm, I'm not too worried about it. So anyway, what we did is we supported it across the hull with a couple of two different uh, uh, boards, so that way it's nice and perpendicular, actually level to these stringers here. And then I used my nifty pin method to go down the stringer and follow the hull. And so now we're just going to take this out and cut it with a uh, jigsaw and see how it fits and then like we did like we're going to do with these is I'm going to actually cut that once I actually glue it in the hole level with the rest of the uh, stringer so those are this one's actually only going to be about six to eight inches tall at the very most well I kind of fast forward a little bit um, we got to work in real fast today and, and I just completely forgot to start videotaping but honestly it didn't miss a whole lot it was made a bunch of measure cut measure cut measure cut um, really not a whole lot to videotape um, although you can see probably my mask mark around my face, I just finished grinding again. Um, I tell you, a Tyvek suit in 85 degree weather ain't no fun at all. It is so hot. I've gone through, I think, a gallon of water today doing this. But um, we got all the stringers are cut and done. So they're all laying here until I can put my uh, coat of varnish on them, or I say varnish, the resin, uh, which I'll start doing probably here in a little bit as soon as I clean up. We're expecting a pretty big storm to come rolling through here and so I got to get cleaned up, put this cover back on here and uh, get ready for the storm. Um, here's a little tip for you. I kind of ran into a little bit of a problem. I remember how I said I was, I was raising the nose up on the, the, the boat a whole lot to make it easier to get in and out? Well, what that was doing is it was cinching the boat up and I had to recut the front stringers over again. We discovered it when we were doing the side stringers and uh, I lowered the boat down and it made a huge difference. So. We want to make sure we keep it nice and level. I went through and remeasured everything, recut what I had to, uh, just to uh, you know get it back to where it needs to be. So <clears throat> I went up here and I grind, I grind out the front where we cut out those stringers. And pardon the wind, it's like 
I don't know, 40 mile an hour gusts today. So I took my grinder and grind down real good in the keel section where we need to add that extra um, fiberglass. And I also got rid of the, uh, the raised areas. I left a little bit of the line there just so I can see it, but it's actually flat. That's actually the pookie or the, that looks just like Bondo. It looked and acts just like Bondo um, where the stringers were. So that way I can kind of see where I need to line down. Um, grind it all the way back to here. And I tell you, look how much dust it creates. I mean, that just shows you just a little bit. And it just uh, makes a huge mess. Um, the little, keeping the stringer elevated above here and tracing it worked out pretty good. You still had a lot of adjustment to do to, uh, once it was um, once it was cut because it wasn't exactly perfect. Uh, and tracing it to the other side, not so much. Um, we had to do a lot more adjusting, but we got it. We beveled the edges. It's all good to go. So I'm going to start uh, putting the, uh, the resin on them and encasing them in 1.5 CFM CSM real quick. But right now I'm going to sweep this out and uh, wash it out really good, let it dry, raise the nose up, and cover it and get ready for this, uh, this rainstorm. So that way it doesn't uh, soak my new transom, although you know it's waterproof and ain't nothing going to hurt it. <laughs> so I think that's it for this weekend until I start doing the, uh, the, the uh, waterproofing, which I'll videotape that later on and show you how I do it. Um, notice, remember I left the uh, stringers taller because what we're going to do is we're going to bed them down, let them set up, and then we're going to cut them to height so that way we can have it exactly right. So uh, that's it for now. All right, so uh, we have uh, everything, all the stringers and bulkheads and everything, at least one side uh, covered in polyester resin. Now, <clears throat> I've only done one side and I mixed it super slow. So what it does is it actually will soak into the wood much, much better. By uh, soaking into the wood, it helps waterproof the, uh, the wood a whole lot better. And uh, I have a little theory also because polyester is not known for sticking to wood very well. So uh, by giving this <clears throat> foundation, uh, it actually will help uh, the polyester stick to it whenever we uh, put more fiberglass on it. So I'm only going to put one uh, coat on both sides, let it soak in real good. And then I'm actually going to put one layer of chop strand mat over all of it. I'm just going to lay it over the top, let it lean over on either side, put down a whole bunch of uh, resin, and then we'll, we'll cut it to, to, uh, to fit. So that way it, it, uh, I'm not going to try to wrap it around on either side because we're going to cap the stringer whenever we cut it to fit. And then this is going to be bedded in PL. So it's not that huge of a deal to wrap the bottom also. So what I'll do is I'll lay out my my chop strand on here, cut it to the right size, and then we'll, we'll go ahead and, uh, and, and cover it properly. So um, <clears throat> this stuff's probably going to take a good two hours for it to kick off. It's late on Sunday. Uh, I'm going to go in there and watch some TV and relax, and then I'll come out tomorrow, flip this over, do the same thing all over again, and uh, hopefully by this weekend we'll be able to put some, uh, some stringers in the boat and actually bed it in, which will be a huge accomplishment. We'll be uh, going along. So anyway, that's it for the weekend.